that's why I say turn on the cam so that I know if you're still there because I found out from teachers that they were lecturing to Kingdom Come, amen, and the kids were not. <laughs> Let me ask you, each of you, you heard an intro about me. Quickly, in one sentence, one sentence, not one phrase, not one paragraph, one sentence, meaning subject, verb, predicate. <laughs> That's it, subject, <laughs> verb, predicate. Because some people, I say, say, Lanza, what's one thing you remember about me? And then they talk for like eight minutes. And I'm fine. It's okay, fine. But everybody doesn't like. One thing each. Okay, go. One thing about me that you heard during the intro. Ah. You, you are one busy woman. <laughs> okay. Second. Oh, I'm being timed here. You are a talk show host. Keynote speaker. Improv. Longtime Toastmaster. Taught, taught me how to use AHA. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, John. Can I take you home? <laughs> I didn't right, know it was two words. <laughs> what? 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 I did not know aha was two words. Yeah, it's a dash ha. ha. <laughs> it's dramatic. That's another thing. I'm a columnist and an editor. So when you just say aha, A H A, like it's nice. But when you're reading, it says aha. You can almost hear the pause, like aha. See, mm. there's air between the ah and the ha. See, Lance. I can still help people learn crazy things. You'll I warn you, and I threaten you, you will never be the same again after tonight. <laughs> yeah. You will all have to learn how to drive. Please, promise, you will all learn how to drive Lance crazy. Oh. <laughs> Vivian, they do not need any pointers from you. <laughs> okay. That is true. Okay. okay, now therefore I will react to that by giving you all of you. Let me see. There, yay! <laughs> Thank you, my heart. There you go. So, if you think you're weird, so tonight, where's the grammarian? Who's the grammarian here? Grammarian, John, you're the okay. So, if you're weird, you're going to learn how to be weirder. And we're the rest. Yes. <laughs> you will learn English from me in the worst possible way. <laughs> and the one who has the best answer is the better rest for tonight. Okay. <laughs> Lance, are you complaining? Okay, Lance, what did you hear about me that you haven't heard before? I don't know that I heard any of that that I hadn't heard before. You and I have been talking regularly now for several months. So uh -huh. I could probably share some things with this group that perhaps <laughs> I shouldn't, but uh, no, I, I don't think so. I, I think a better question is, Judy, what have you heard this e this afternoon that you find? I believe there was mention of Mensa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That she dealt with Mensa. I was a president of the Mensa Toastmasters Club. So we kind of have a legitimate excuse for being strange. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Notice, I'm politically correct. I said kind of because I don't want to upset them, right? But Mensa is supposed to be known for its intelligence. Isn't that the main gist of belonging to Mensa? Yes, and I think you're complaining why I was with them. <laughs> But it's true how you think about this. People who are not that bright don't get jokes. So the fact that you're all fun, funny, and fantastic people, you're all bright. What's Lance doing there? I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember the old song, right? During our time, you always hurt the one you love. So <laughs> she loves you a lot, Lance. That means she loves you like a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I I have to tell.
tell you something. Where, um, who's married in this room? Okay, go. Who is married to a person in this room? Nobody. Okay, so I get away with one line. I tell people, first things first, I'm halfway around the world. So I'm harmless, if not useless. <laughs> Second, if anyone complains, I really tell them, please tell your wife, I'm not stealing you. I'm just borrowing you. What's her name? <laughs> so I teach mediation and negotiation skills. You, you learn to play with words. Of course, seriously, I, I'm, I'm in legal communication. I, I teach people how to get along with, you know, like neighbors or fighting each other. There. So ask me questions. Ask me anything. I don't have to have the answer, but you can ask. <laughs> what was the most challenging mediation project you were ever involved in? Okay. You're all above 18, no? I presume. Okay. <laughs> so boy next door and girl next door fall in love, but their parents hate each other. So girl gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. Parents are furious. So it needed the wisdom of Solomon. <laughs> so who did you ask to come help you? So what happens is we have small court here. We have small court. And my role, we had, okay, good question. We had a show. It was on teleradio, which is radio in television setup like this. We air both on radio and TV and people from all over the world, world would call in. So what happened is I taught them that if you are fighting now, I promise you when, I don't know about you guys there, but in, in Asia, when the baby comes, everybody makes peace because they all want to borrow the baby. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, would you do the same or say mine and you can never see the baby or just kind of have to get along and share what I think. Peace. Share peace. Yeah. What? Well, I mean, yeah, see what? Preferably share so there would be peace, but you can bet there's going to be some jealousy and rivalry going on no. under no. her, maybe. Yeah, definitely the food, the clothes, the everything. So I make people laugh and I say, if you can't decide what day, what time, and who gets what, I just told them, how about you toss coin? If you're not lucky, sorry, you'll never see the baby. <laughs> <laughs> see, the, I'll tell you the power of humor. And that's why I tell people, everyone should take two pathways. Seriously, the first pathway I tell people is presentation mastery. If you can't present anything, as in what you want to eat when you go out, you're always presenting something. Then the second I tell them is engaging humor, even if you're not funny. At least you will understand that there are certain ways you can do certain things. Like this, they don't want to talk to each other and their faces look <laughs> body language. Uh -huh. Yeah, in Asia, the body language is very strong in the Philippines. Yes, yes, Kathy. I have a question. How can you use humor without offending somebody? while you're trying to use it in a positive, complimentary, hopefully, way? First things first, you don't crack jokes. Humor is not about jokes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I tell people, if you're cracking jokes that you get, got from the internet, you're plagiarizing. Third <laughs> is, if they heard it before, they're going to tell you to go away. Right? Yeah. I mean, a rock artist, and the thing is, exactly, they're fighting toss coin. You just tweak it by one degree and, and really make it, you know the class clown in school? The one where the teacher couldn't get angry because he was just too funny, the teacher would end up laughing? That's me. Now, <laughs> now here's why they couldn't kick me out of school. From the age of seven, I had multiple scholarships, but I was funny. Meaning, we had dress code. 
And during the early 60s, that's when the mini skirts first came out. And if you look at Google, the skirts were so short, they look like shirts. Are you aware of that? Have you ever seen the clothes from before? Yes, Melanie, mm -hmm. there. So one day I got called to the principal's office. Mr. Rohr, I didn't go to a Philippine school, by the way, which is why I'm like this. I went to the one and only American school in the Philippines, and it's now called International School. And there's one in every country around the world for expats. And uh, yeah, not many Filipinos talk this way, which is why I'm with Toastmasters in America and anywhere in the world except my country, because it's mutual. <laughs> they don't like me and I don't like them. See, mutual. <laughs> Mutual. <laughs> see, see what I did there? That is your. It's mutual, right? It's mutual. You don't like me, you don't like you. It's mutual. You mutually don't like each other. <laughs> <laughs> You're married. What will you do with me? So I got called to the, yes, Melanie, thank you. And keep it there because I might have a senior moment. Yeah. But show me your face because you're pretty. I want to see your face. You kind of move there. Okay. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I love you more. Sorry, John. It's over. Okay. So. <laughs> As I was saying, the principal, Vivian, you know we have a dress code. Yes, Mr. Rohr, all-American guy, principal. Um, you know what the dress code is? Yes, Mr. Rohr, it's 18 inches from the floor. Listen to where the humor comes in. From the floor. And people normally have above the knee, below the knee. But I'm five feet tall, and my classmates, the girls, were like 5'8", five 5'9", five the girls in the basketball team. So they made a dress code from the floor. Mr. Roy, the principal, stands as we all walk into school and he sees all the skirts. So imagine what is 18 inches from the floor is probably below your knee and way above my knee. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I said, you know what it is? Yes, sir. 18 inches. Uh, Mr. Roy, may I please borrow a pencil and a ruler? And I'm just going to put this small dot on the wall. And I promise, really cross my heart and hope my neighbor dies. I promise. <laughs> I promise I'm going to erase that dot. So I measured 18 inches from the floor. I stood by the wall and smiled. <laughs> 18 inches. He was like, <laughs> like, how did that happen? So I said, Mr. Rohrer, I, I hope you'll understand. It, it's something hereditary. We have a problem. It's in our genes. <laughs> what have the genes got to do with your skirt? Mr. Rohr, please, I, I'm not asking for pity, but we have genetically lonely, so the skirts just look. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all of 15, but they couldn't do anything because I was an A student. What do you do with an A student who's wacky? <laughs> you don't know what to do with her. And so he said, you know, Vivian, you're too bright for your own good. You are correct. I apologize. And he said, let me erase this. And he said, do me a favor. How about you lengthen it by one inch? In those days, to lengthen the skirt by one inch, oh, Mr. Rohrer, I'd rather die. I'd become an old maid if I dressed that way. One of the boys would like, no. I said, I was already a negotiator. How about half an inch, Mr. Rohrer? He said, uh, rolling off the ice. He said, whatever it is, do something, lengthen your skirt, and let the boys focus on the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story of my life. I get into all sorts of situations. Yeah, I travel to 12 countries. I can go into museums and parks without paying. Why do you want to learn that, no? There. Ah, with the red card. Yeah, I still have a couple of minutes. See the trick now? You push the red card early and then ignore the timer. <laughs> <laughs> love you, love you, love you. Okay. So, the trick is to know the language of the country you're going to. Hablo español, je parle français. So in France and Spain and Mexico, I speak the language and they're just so thrilled. And I said, no tengo dinero, pero, pero quiero entrar. I don't have money, but I want to go in. He said, no puede. You can't do that. And so, bring out my lipstick. Seriously, Lance, I hope you won't be ashamed of me. Bring out my lipstick, make it really dark, and I tell the guard in front, te voy a besar, I'm going to give you a kiss if you let me in. What do you expect? <laughs> I get in. <laughs> Just a kiss on lipstick. I mean, so, 
More questions? I think Dwayne's in shock. Dwayne, are, are you in shock? Sorry. Yeah, okay. Seriously. <laughs> questions? <laughs> questions? <laughs> Oh. Vivian, when you when you left um when you left high school, what was your process to get where you are now? Did you go to college? What did you major in? Okay. Um, um, good question. In school, what I did was take languages. So I studied American, Spanish, and French language, grammar, history, and government all at the same time. Does that mean I'm bright? No, I'm hyperactive and my worst enemy is boredom. So my brain has to always be doing all of these intellectually challenging things. The question is, I wasn't happy with just four languages. And of course, the fifth was body language. I had a better body. But you see, Lance, now I have more of body. It was better before. But look at how wide I am on the screen. See, I just have more body. That's another story for another day. So I went to learn another language and another language. It was machine language, assembler and COBOL language. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest nerd and geek in the entire country. So looking back, I was always trying to build bridges of communication in whatever manner I could. But also because in computers, that's where all the boys were. But <laughs> Of course. So, so you've been able to build a lot of bridges in relationships because of your languages and your versatility? Yes. And remember, if you think language is about English, Spanish, German, remember, the best language is the language of the heart. Like you realize I'm reading you. I'm reading you. So it's about sensitivity. And really, the simple word is caring enough to not bore people. And that's my template because boredom is my worst enemy there and melanie's like go away okay so she's going to turn my zoom off in 29 seconds so i'm glad you asked all these wacky questions if you invite me again i'm going to tell you more but it's four in the morning you know how long it took to get my eyebrows even <laughs> thank you i'm glad you enjoyed i enjoyed you too mwah, 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 mwah. i like thank you it.